All right. Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the uh, October 13th, 2022 meeting of the Burlington Conservation Commission. <laughs> we'll try to talk a little bit louder because these microphones are not working. Technical difficulties. Uh, so uh, I call this hybrid meeting of the Burlington Conservation Commission to order. Uh, this open meeting of the Burlington Conservation Commission is being conducted both virtually and consistent with chapter 107 and the acts of 2022 through WebEx link provided in the agenda on the town's website and in person. <coughs> Technology, reasonable public access is afforded to the public uh, so they can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Public participation is provided during public participation part of the agenda. It's also provided for during public hear hearings as provided by law and other public participation is at the discretion of the chair. If the Conservation Commission encounters technical problems like tonight during this meeting, the chair uh, may at my discretion decide how to address said problems, which includes proceeding with the in-person meeting despite any technological problems. A couple of other items. Please remember to, uh, if you're online, mute your phone or computer when not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. When recognized, please first state your name and if a resident where you live before speaking. Finally, each vote taken during this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote because it's a hybrid meeting. Uh, the first item as part of calling the meeting to order on the agenda is to confirm which members of the commission are present. As I call your name, please state whether or not you are present. All right, Ed Laturco. Here. Jennifer O'Riordan. She'll be marked as absent. Don Bernstein. Here. Indra Deb. Here. Ben Moffitt. Here. Bill Boyvin. Here. And the chair, Larry Cohen, for the record, I am here. Okay. All right. So the next thing on the agenda is public participation. Uh, is there anyone here for something, usually for something not on the agenda? Yeah, ma'am, ma'am. Listen. I want to say uh, hi. And uh, please state your name for the record. And you have uh, you have three minutes, like everyone else. Yeah, uh, you are free to talk. Please do. George Bassler. I just want right. to say. Okay. I just, nice, nice, nice to hear from you. I just want to say hi. I'm going to listen. Thank you. Well, that was okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you for. Well, I can in. say more if you want, but you probably don't want me to. <laughs> okay, no, you're welcome to listen. Thank you. Uh, all right, anyone else uh, for public participation? No. Okay, so the next item of business is item three. It's the approval of minutes for September 8th, 2022. Uh, is there any commissioner who would like to uh, discuss the minutes? Anything major? I offered some uh, comments and Eileen has them. All right, so they were minor comments, not for discussion. Correct. All right. And, and correct. All right, could I have a motion, therefore, to accept the minutes of September 8th, 2022? So moved. Okay, Edlo Turco has moved it. Second? Second. Kent, Kent Moffitt seconds it. Okay. Ed, how do you vote? Yes. Don, how do you vote? Yes. Indra? Yes. Uh, Kent Moffitt? Yes. Uh, Bill Boyden. Yes. And the chair votes yes by a vote of 600. The minutes of September 8th are approved. Now we'll move to uh, item 4. 4A is a certificate of compliance for 59-61 Middlesex Turnpike, the Noria Energy Corporation. It has a DEP number of 122-657. Someone here perhaps for that? Right here. Hey, you can... Uh, sure. I'm not sure that's like so uh just 
state your name and who you're affiliated with, and we'll just go from there. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good evening for the record. Tim McGuire, I'm a wildlife biologist and wetland scientist here on behalf of Nuria, the uh, applicant for the property. We are here to close out an existing order of conditions in which no work commenced for the property on Middlesex Turnpike. Um, and it's existing conditions, it's a gas station and a closed down D'Angelo's as far as I'm aware, um, within buffer zone, the BVW and riverfront area to Vine Brook. Again, no work has commenced. We are before you later tonight for notice of intent to um, propose uh, something new. But until then, in order to pursue a new permit, we need to close out the existing OOC through the issuance of a COC. So we respectfully request the commission to issue that COC. All right, thank you for that summary. Eileen, do you have any reason not to close this out? No, uh, it, it was approved by you. It, I think it wasn't approved by the planning board. So for various reasons, they've just changed their plan. They need to close it out. Nothing happened as Mr. McGuire said. And was have no reason. bond posted with this one? Uh, they had not yet paid, they had not paid a bond, no. So no. And we don't have to return it if they never paid it. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, any of the commissioners have any issue? No. All right, could I have a motion? to uh, close out their certificate of compliance for 59 slash 61 Middlesex Turnpike that was issued to Nuria Energy Corporation, DEP file number 122-657. So moved. Okay, Second. Bill Boyman moved it. Second? Second, second Indra. Okay, second. okay, Indra, you got it for the second. All right, Ed, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Don? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Indra. Yes. All right. Kent. Yes. Uh, Bill. Yes. And the chair votes yes by a vote of 600. The certificate of compliance has been issued for 59 slash 61 Middlesex Turnpike. That was 4A. 4B, we have your officers that we'll see you shortly. Okay. Uh, 4B is 15 Dolores Drive. It is a request for a certificate of compliance for Sunshine Realty Trust. DEP file number 122-662. Is there anyone here for that one? No. Okay. Uh, the commission was out yesterday. Uh, some of us were out and uh, we did a site inspection. Uh, Eileen or John, do you have any comments? Um, no, this was, well, sorry, I'll just say that this was, um, you issued an order of conditions for a teardown and a rebuild within the buffer zone to BBW. Um, as you said, we went out yesterday. Uh, I had been out there a few times, had taken some pictures there. Um, oh, wrong one. Sorry. Their, um, their fence is in place as you requested. I think there are some plantings behind there too. Their, um, their in underground, in their infiltration system is in place and they have a um, um, drip edge stone trench on the other side. The grass isn't quite coming up at the back, but I'm not concerned about that because it's not going to go anywhere. It's in the back and the grass at the front is pretty well established. So I have no issues I, with this project, no particular issues with the, this project. And I think you could release the bond as well. All right. The full amount of the bond you're recommending? Yes, I think so. All right. So is there any commissioner that has any issue with regard to 15 Dolores Drive before we get to the request for certificate? All right, then could I have a motion, please, please, uh, I think it's good if, for the record if you state your name who makes the motion. It's probably better for the people that are taking minutes. Uh, please, uh, I'd, I'd entertain a motion to issue a certificate of compliance for 15 Dolores Drive to Sunshine Realty Trust, DEP file number 122-662. Ed Leturco, so move. Second. Second, Bill. All right, uh, we have a second in motion. Ed, how do you vote? Yes. Don? Yes. Kendra? Yes. Kent? Yes. Bill? Yes. And the chair votes yes by a vote of 600. The certificate of compliance for 15. No public vote? No public invoice? No, not on this one. Uh, is, it is already approved. Uh, second, we have a bond for how much? 3,500. Okay, 3,500. We have a recommendation from staff to have full release of the bond of $3,500 because there are no issues left. Is there such a motion? So moved, Indra. Okay, second? Second, Bill. Okay, 
Uh, we have a seconded motion for full release of the bond. Ed, how do you vote? I have a question. Uh, I not right now, sir. Uh, Don, how do you vote? Yes. Indra. Yes. Kent. Yes. Bill. Yes. And the chair votes yes by a vote of six zero zero. Uh, full release of the bond. What is your question? I want to know if that woman is from Northern Ireland or Southern. All right, uh, that's not relevant. I'm sorry, it's relevant to the. Uh, no, it is relevant. Uh, all right, because of the IRA and all this. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, uh, we have. So you're not going to address my question? No, I am not. It's it's out of order. Next, we have item five A. Right. So we love you, Ireland. All right. Yes, yeah, so you need to right, right. All right. Okay, five A is uh, a continued uh, request for determination. Uh, one Elizabeth Ave by Stephanie Hamill. Uh, it is to clear, grade, and close the deck, and it was continued from September eighth. Is there someone here for that project, perhaps? No. Probably not. All right. Uh, let's mute you. Uh, uh, you. I was just going to explain to you that um, I spoke. Well, I exchanged. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that her husband on there? I exchanged an email with Miss uh, Hamill um, earlier today, and she she would actually like to take the grading and the wall building off the off the request. So it's now only for. The tree removals, and at some stage, they would like to enclose the deck, which was part of the original um, right. request. Okay, uh, if I remember correctly, we had no issue with the tree removal. That is correct. We had no significant issue with the tree removal. All right. All right. So, uh, uh, is there any abutters to this project at One Elizabeth? Is her husband here, and I'm not, not recognizing him? I know. Okay. All right, so uh, let's see, does, do you have any issue with issuing the uh, determination? Um, no, I don't. We circulated a draft determination earlier right. in case we should decide to issue it. So um, we can go through that and discuss it if, if, if you are willing. All right. Any issues with, with trees? Let's see trees. if there's any issues with, from the commission. Okay. All right, uh, any issues from Kent or Bill? With no. One Elizabeth. Ed? No. Uh, Don or Indra, any issues? Nope. All right, I have nothing further. Please review the draft. Sorry, in all the excitement, I didn't have it quite ready. Um, will do. All right, so we're going to have to change it a little bit because I only found out today that that the, the change. So we can. That's... Okay. All right. Okay, so this. Um, the applicant proposed to remove one ash and three Norway maple trees. I call those trees a trees a abutting the vinyl fence to the rear left of the house and two tr spruce trees close to the right fence and close the deck to become a room. And then I'm going to remove this part about build a wall. Um, the work was located within the 100 foot buffer zone to bordering vegetated wetland. Their wetlands were flagged on the rear left of the parcel for a previous project and were shown in the reference plan. Trees A to be removed were approximately two feet from the BBW. Trees uh, B to be removed were approximately 90 feet from the BBW. The deck to be enclosed was uh, 36 feet away. And I'm going to again remove the grading because it's not relevant anymore. Um, the order of conditions, an order of conditions was issued in 2019 for the construction of this house, which stated that no fill shall be added to the lot after completion of construction without the filing of a notice of intent. This condition shall be noted in certificate of compliance as existing in perpetuity. And we, well, John reminded us to add in the part, the conditions um, also that stated that permanent demarcation in this case of fence shall be erected and to prevent encroach, encroachment into the wetland area. So this is to remind them to not include, to not dump any um, material behind the fence. Um, uh, no work other than debris removal should occur beyond the demarcation fence. The applicant may proceed with the removal of the six trees and removal of any other trees will require additional. I'm proof. guessing northern Dublin, maybe. Or 
Tree trimming or removals that are not feasible to do by hand, machinery such as a bucket truck or crane shall be located in the driveway or existing lawn areas. Straw wattles, straw wattles. Actually, I'm not sure the straw wattles are necessary, are really need, are the straw wattles needed anymore? So just doing the trees and the deck? Um, Possibly, we'll, we'll just leave those. All construction, demolition degrees, materials and excavated soil shall be disposed of off deck in a le legal manner. There should be no stockpiling of soil or other materials within 30 feet of wetlands. No tracking of sediment onto roadways shall be allowed. And if that happens, roadways should be swept. Um, and again, we're going to remove the part about the grading uh, because they're not going to do that. Um, do not dump any debris into the wetlands and anything that goes into the wetlands should be removed. Other than the debris removal, no work shall occur beyond the re-demarcation fence. No pesticides, herbicides and fungicides to be used um, within 100 feet of wetlands on this property. All right, so if any of the commissioners have any edits or changes to, uh, to the decision? No. Oh. All right, so we have a negative conditional determination. Uh, could I have a motion to issue a negative conditional determination? Under Burlington Bylaw Article 14 and the State Wetlands Protection Act for 1 Elizabeth Avenue. Oh, Bill. Second. All right. So we have Ed, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Don? Yes. All right. Indra? Yes. All right. Kent? Yes. Bill? Yes. The chair votes yes by a vote of 600, a negative conditional determination is approved for 1 Elizabeth Avenue. All right. All right, now we're down on the agenda to item 5B. Notice is hereby given the Town of Burlington Conservation Commission will hold a public meeting during which time a request for determination applicability has been filed by the trustees of the reservation. Uh, the commission will take all information related to the proposed replacement extension and installation of a foot and bog bridge on existing trails within the locally regulated riverfront area, the bordering vegetative wetlands, and the 100 foot buffer zone to bordering vegetative wetlands. And the property is located at 25 Blanchard Road. It is known as Mary Cummings Park. Man, you, you talk too fast. Slow and down. Thereafter, Slow. is the determination. The applications being heard pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 131, Section 4. That's for ADA compliance Section with the Act. state law. Slow down a little bit. Bronson Thank you. Bylaw, Article 14. Sir, you're not recognized. Please. Uh, the, uh, to obtain a That's copy state of law. So do what you want. To conservation at Burlington.org. Okay, someone from the trustees here? Yeah, I'm here. Hmm? I'm here. Can you hear me? Can. Oh, yes. Hi. Hi, sorry. I'm coming in on video. All right, please uh, state your name for the record, please. My name is Chi Lin. I'm the uh, trail specialist for the trustees, one of the trail specialists. Okay, and you? Jeremy Dex, stewardship manager. All right, so Back up. we're here representing this project. Yeah, Chi, Chi will take the lead. I'm here. That's All right, so uh, would either one of you like to issue any summary at all? Uh, any make any comments on it? Uh, you did a pretty good job there. <laughs> Um, like you said, just replacing three existing bridges, uh, two on the wetland trail, one on the tunnel trail. Um, yeah, replacing and repairing an existing bog bridge and extending it 50 feet. Um, right one, but I took a picture the of the bog bridge. Yeah. yeah, that's the bog bridge there on the screen. So we'll redeck that because those boards are starting to fail and we'll extend it um, across the muddy section at the end there. Can you all imagine this? You gotta go to the town meeting or whatever this is to replace wood. Uh, sir, the, the, the public is not recognized during this kind of proceeding, please. All right, relax, go ahead. Okay, so this bridge here is obviously failing. It's in pretty yep. bad shape. So we're going to yep. replace it with an aluminum frame wood deck, 24-foot uh, bridge. So it'll span a little bit further, get it off the, you know, up on the bank of the stream. 
Uh, yeah. Who cares? It. Just yeah. replace it. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I appreciate your support. No problem, bro. All right. So and then uh, there's one more replacement. Um, I think the picture should be there if you want to scroll to the next. <laughs> okay. Uh, are you done, sir? No. Uh, Sorry, I was actually no more to... pictures. Well, okay. there's just there's one more uh, small footbridge that we'll replace with a, a swamp mat timber bridge, uh, which we did in 2020 on another section of trail at Mary Cummings. Okay, item six. Okay, we're gonna take something out of order because of the technical difficulties we're having. Oh yeah, you're done. Thank you. All right, Th I just want to say thank you, <laughs> and you're, you're doing great. And it doesn't, Thanks, Jeremy. It doesn't professional. It doesn't quite feel that so way. You. Thank you. So are you guys. You're doing great yeah, as well. Thank you. All right. So yeah. we're going to. Could I have a motion? Could I have a motion to take item number six out of order? Uh, is there such a motion? What? So move. Ed. Second. Ed. All right. Ed, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Don, can you hear us? Yes. Okay. Indra? Yes. Uh, Kent? Yes. And the chair votes yes. Uh, are you abstaining or just not voting? Uh, well, I guess I can vote on taking it out of order. Yes. Yes. So if by a voter and the chair votes yes, by a vote of 600, we're taking number six out of order because of technical difficulties that we're having. Notice is hereby given the Town of Burlington Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing during which time uh, it's to take information related to a notice of intent filed by Nico Gallinelli for the demolition of an existing single family dwelling and the construction of a new single family dwelling at 69 Beaver Brook Road. The proposed work would be within the 100 foot buffer zone to isolated vegetative wetlands pursuant to Burlington bylaw article 14. The commission will review all information relative to the application and may issue a Burlington wetlands permit. Uh, the application may be viewed on the uh, on the commission's website uh, and just click on the appropriate link for 69 Braverbrook. So is there someone here for that one? Hi, uh, Kyle Cormier with Oxo Associates here to represent the applicant. Um, the applicant is also here, uh, Nico. And then I have a coworker on the call as well. He's just gonna be listening in, uh, Dom Kemet. All right, thank you. The floor is yours. Mr. Chairman, before uh, I am a direct abutter to this property, so I'm going to recuse myself from any uh, action on the committee, and I'll be moving to the audience to listen and participate as an abutter. Okay, thank you. All right, so now with that, would you please continue? Yeah, um, it's okay if I share my screen to show the plan just while I'm talking? Absolutely. It is. Okay, the uh, proposed project is a, a tear down rebuild um, of the existing house. Um, the new house uh, is going to be outside of the 40 foot no build buffer, uh, approximately nine feet. Um, there is a infiltration system also proposed with the house. Um, this will also be outside the no build buffer. Um, the existing 100-year uh, on-site is 28 uh, cubic feet. Um, and then after the infiltration system is installed, it'll be 0.17, so an improvement over existing conditions. Um, there are 10, 12 trees uh, proposed to be cut. Uh, we are proposing 10 plantings uh, to replace those one inch caliper, uh, five red oaks and five sugar maples. Um, there is a proposed stone retaining wall that is within the no build buffer. However, this is not going to be a, uh, it will not be under a building permit since it's under uh, the required height to be considered uh, a building. Um, so it, it, the, the bylaw does not apply in this situation. Um, 
And also, I, I'd like to mention too that this project is under a local bylaw filing only. Um, the wetlands that were flagged on site were isolated. Uh, Dom in my office uh, did the flagging and he looked around the entirety of the wetland as best as he could and did not see any uh, outflows or inflows, um, as well as looked at aerial images and did not uh, see any inflows or outflows. Um, with that being said, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay, uh, Eileen. Uh, do you have some comments, please? Um, I think um, uh, Kyle's explanation was pretty clear. There's an isolated wetland in the back right corner of the house, which is the sort of western corner of the house. Um, at least we're um, they have identified it as being wetland, an isolated wetland rather than a bordering vegetated wetland. They are proposing to build a retaining wall, maybe 25 feet or so from the wetland and have a little bit of grading, but it's it's pretty minimal grading across most of the property, um, like approaching the house. The house is definitely going to be considerably bigger than the existing one. They do have a pr proposed infiltration system. My only question for um, any of the applicants who are here is what they'll what they're proposing to do for the driveway runoff. Um, I think in the field, Nico has agreed to install a a uh, gravel trench alongside the driveway, um, if that's acceptable with the commission. I don't have any more questions. Okay. All right. So, uh, let's well, I have a question. No, not not yet. We have to go to the commission first. Uh, Ed, do you have any questions on this one? Nothing to add. Uh, Kent. Add. Uh, okay. Uh, Don. Nothing to add. Uh, Indra? Nothing to add. Okay, my one question is uh, how are you going to get the the uh, the runoff, the proper slope on the driveway, so at least some of it goes into uh, the yes. stone? Um, I mean, we can slope the driveway to the one side where the, the stone trench is, and that can be spec'd out. Um, I'm sure we can provide uh, some detail on that. Yeah, I mean, you're going to provide some detail so that the construction people are aware of it. Yeah, we can even uh, write a note that the driveway slopes towards the uh, the trench. Okay, that it should be pitched towards the trench. Yeah. Okay, I mean, it's difficult to get 100% with respect to all the water in, but if it's not sloped, none of it goes in. Yes. May I ask another question? Yes, go ahead. Um, I know that one of the butters to the property was asking if there if it was possible to not cut down the two trees closest to the back of the lot. Is this a possibility that they'd be open to? No, cut them down. Cut them right down. It Please. looks like it looks like the retaining wall is pretty low at that point, so I'm just wondering whether it would be an issue. Um, I'll leave that question up to, to Nico if he's uh, still there. Um, I can discuss with Nico um, regarding those two trees. I'm assuming it's fine to leave them. Um, Sorry, I, I realized I was on mute. Are, are we talking about the two trees that are near where it says lot 83B? I think that yes. is said, yes. Yes, that, that's the exact two, yep. I'm just looking at, I, I want to say, and, and again, I'm, I'm speaking from memory, but I want to say that the, one of the main reasons to try to open this up is because some of these trees are not healthy. A lot of these trees are rotten on the inside, and I'm, I'm pretty certain at least one of those two trees is, is one of the candidates, but there are a lot of trees there that, while they are still alive, I agree, um, they're, they're not going to do well if if we don't when we start sloping and grading and working towards keeping this somewhat you know beneficial to the lower side of the wetlands these trees are going to suffer 
there's already fallen trees within this area that have fallen down in the last two, three, four years because they've been rotten and it's just, they're, they're being swamped with water right now. All right, Eileen, yeah, could, did you notice that these trees you're questioning were in poor condition? I, I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't notice the shape of the trees myself. All right, so, I did. so yeah, the way, yeah, way, yeah, we, yeah, way we normally, excuse me, sir, please, you'll get your chance. Uh, right. Normally the way we work with this is either you see something visible that makes it obvious or uh, if it's near the wetlands, you, it can't be taken down unless you get an arborist or something like that to certify that the tree is not doing well. Okay, so I mean, I think is that the standard way we leave it, Eileen? It is. These are both within the buffer zone, but they're what? Are they, how far are they? Like four, more than forty feet from the wetland. Yeah. Um, I can okay, I I think. You have somebody in the audience who can maybe clarify this bit better. All right. Okay. So let's first we're going to go to anybody in the audience that has a comment. Then we will go to anybody online. So first in the audience, Bill, Mr. Boyvin, you have a comment. You're on a butter. Yes, I do. Thank you. Uh, I was the one who questioned those two trees. Uh, they're very small trees. They're like a six inch caliber. They're very healthy. They're literally right up against the fence on, uh, I'm sorry, this is Bill Boyvin. Oh Street, my goodness. 13 Fox Hill Road. They are right up against the fence. Uh, and I don't think that would affect your grading or anything at all. I've tied a yellow uh, marker on each of them so you can see which ones they are. Uh, it's just that they're small. They have, their canopy is right above the fence and they actually offer a decent screen between the two properties. And I don't think it would affect any of the uh, operation you're trying to do. Uh, I, if you agree and you look at them as they are marked, I would appreciate it if you could leave them. Uh, those are not the trees that I thought we were talking about because the right. trees that I thought we were talking about were larger in caliper. If they no. are up against the fence, they actually don't do me any damage. I don't plan on removing the fence. I have no problem with leaving those there. Great. Thank you. And then I had one other question. Um, are you planning to do some kind of rodent control or put up... Um, you know, the bait traps? I do that all the time before I tear down the house, yes. I have a concern with that because poisons are not good for the wildlife, and I'm a big yeah, wildlife fan. natural thing. poisons, which is healthy and for the so, you know, I would you, should, you should do something yourself, actually. Thank you. I'm, I'm willing to discuss that and appease. If you don't want me to put them in, I have no problem with that. If you want to use, if you want me to use an alternative method, um, we, uh, I'm, I'm flexible in that regard. I usually do it to help the neighbors because it can be a problem, but I, I right. you know. Good. Uh, I mean, I, on my own property, I have the boxes, but I put snap traps in them. No, 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 so no small animals, my dogs can't get at them and stuff like that. So something like that would be a good uh, alternative, I think. Okay. Thank you. Those are the only questions I had. Is there anyone else in the audience for 69 Beaverbrook? All right, is there anybody online who would like to make a comment about this project? Yes, yeah, hell yeah. I'm in support of this. Just vote okay. yes. Thank you. State your name, please, so we have it for the record. George Bassler. Thank you, Mr. Bassler. Okay, is there anyone else online? Chairman, I guess he's required to say his name and address. Ah, oh yeah, we are supposed to say your location. No, 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 no. that guy's a lunatic. I'm actually prohibited by federal law to provide my location. I'm a protected, uh, I cannot provide my address. But they should vote yes on this. Hell yeah. All right, he doesn't want to, let the record show that he does not want to provide a location. All right, so. No, it's not that I don't want to provide my location. I'm in Burlington all the time. I cannot okay. provide my location by law. All right. Is there anyone else online that would like to make a comment? All right, so uh, uh, I did not hear any major problems. So- Nice to see the CPA. Uh, what, what, Love y'all. Were we going to uh, issue at the next meeting? Was that the plan, Eileen? That is what we typically do. Your your usual preference is to open at one meeting and close at the next. We did, however, delay these people by unfortunately having to cancel the last meeting. So it's up to you. All right. I didn't hear any issues that would prevent us from issuing, given that we canceled the last meeting. Therefore, 
Uh, if unless uh, any of the commissioners have an objection, please review the draft documents. Okay. Um, oh, sorry, wrong one. Okay, I didn't actually forward you guys a draft, but we did draft something in case we um, had this issue. Oh, no, where's it gone? I don't know. Here we go. But only. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, Mr. Cormier, could you please stop sharing your content? Because I can't share. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Um, okay. So the proposed project consists of demolition of an existing single family residence shed and driveway and construction of a new single family residence attached garage and driveway and associated grading and utilities. The applicant proposed to remove four trees. However, I think he said 12 right there. Um, so I, I will, well, I'll check on those and plant 10 native trees in the buffer zone. Proposed work would be within the buffer zone to an isolated wetland pursuant to the Burlington bylaw article 14. Then we went through the filing history, the plan document references, uh, one of which was shared by um, Mr. Cormier. Um, today, the proposed work was within the buffer zone to isolated wetland. The wetland is isolated. It's not regulated under the Wetlands Protection Act. There was no field evidence at the area of flood, so it was not deemed to be an isolated land subject to flooding. This application was filed under the Burlington bylaw only. Scrolling down to stormwater management, um, uh, they're exempt from the Massachusetts uh, stormwater management regulations, but they do apply comply with the bylaw regulations, which states that runoff from imper impervious surfaces shall be infiltrated on site to the maximum extent possible. In accordance with this, the applicant is infiltrating the rooftop into a 16 chamber chamber uh, subsurface infiltration system. I'm just going to add a sentence here saying, and the driveway will be directed to a stone trench. Um, stormwater calculations demonstrate a net reduction in peak discharges for all storm events. Um, the applicant respons is responsible for obtaining all applicable permits. And then if we scroll down, there are some conditions, um, among which are that uh, the permit allows work within the 100 foot buffer zone to isolated wetlands and no other work are permitted by this decision. Um, Scrolling down a little bit further, we're requiring under pre-construction conditions, we're requiring that the applicant um, contact the commission um, before he does the work. And in, at that time, we will examine the proposed limit of work, which we marked out the um, erosion controls should be in place, evidence that the permit has been filed at the registry of deeds, a dewatering plan if necessary. And at that stage, he should have also paid his bond. Um, the erosion controls shall be installed as shown in the refer reference plan, plus along both frontages at Fox Hill and Beaverbrook Road. The, um, um, uh, the erosion controls at the back will be 12 inch, inch compost filter tubes, but wattles may be used at, along the street frontage. I got the uh, dimensions wrong here of the stone ent entrance trench because I had just thrown it in. I will put the correct dimensions in. Um, uh, Materials shall not be stockpiled on the site within 20 feet of the site of the street, nor within 40 feet of the wetland. And um, no dewatering permitted without a plan that has been approved and keep the site clean. Um, any debris that falls into the wetlands shall be removed by hand, and that condition shall be noted uh, as existing in perpetuity. Uh, scrolling down again, no pesticides, herbicides, or fungicides shall not be used within the buffer zone to wetlands. Rooftop runoff shall be infiltrated on site. On site using a field of Coltec chambers. And uh, the infiltration system shall be managed as described in the operations and maintenance plan, which will remain in perpetuity. Um, the retaining wall will be installed about 25 feet from the wetland, and the areas behind that retaining wall should be left as naturally vegetated and not maintained as lawn or landscape. Two signs shall be installed, denoting that the area is protected wetland. Uh, those, the sign, the wall and signage shall be maintained in perpetuity. 10 native trees shall be planted in the buffer zone to the isolated wetland. No occupancy shall occur prior to uh, planting of the trees and shrubs. And those that are um, that fail to survive within the first two growing seasons should be replaced. And the wetland shall be left otherwise uh, natural in perpetuity. And we're proposing that uh, the applicant pays a $2,500 cash performance guarantee prior to any. 
And then the, the, the final part is just about how he goes about getting his certificate of occupancy and certificate of compliance. Okay. Uh, any of the commissioners have any comments on either the findings or the, uh, the permit? All right, then can I have a motion to close the hearing, please, for 69 Beaverbrook? So moved, Ed. Second? Second, Indra. Okay. Ed, how do you vote? Yes. Don? Yes. Indra? Yes. Kent? Yeah. Bill? Oh, Bill's not in it. Okay. Uh, and myself, five by a vote of 500, zero, zero, the hearing for 69 Beaverbrook is closed. Uh, could I have a motion? Uh, do we have the finding as separate? I wasn't, the some findings are separate, right? No, the, the findings were all in one because they were all only. Because it's only a wetlands permit, right? Okay. All right, could I have a motion to issue the order of conditions and the, approve the findings? It's it's just a, a wetland bylaw, this wetland, order of conditions. Wetland bylaw permit. Yes, but wetland bylaw permit. Issue a wetland bylaw permit with the findings for 69 Beaver Brook under Burlington Bylaw Article 14. Is there a motion? Yes. So move. Second. Second. Second, Ed. All right. Ed, how do you vote? Yes. Don? Yes. Indra? Yes. Uh, Kent? Yes. And the chair votes yes by a vote of 5-0-0. Zero, zero. Uh, the wetlands permit for 69 Beaver Brook is approved. Uh, is there a recommended bond? 2,500. 2500 okay could i have a motion to require the posting of a $2500 performance bond under burlington bylaw article 14 that's bullshit for, for, whatever for the uh, 69 beaverbrook so moved indra second second can all right ed how do you vote yes don yes indra yes i uh, can't yes Okay, the chair votes yes by a vote of five zero zero. Uh, the request is approved for uh, the applicant to post $2,500 performance bond under Burlington bylaw article 14 for 69 Beaver Block. All right, folks, you're all set. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Thank right, you. Hell yeah. All right. All right, so next, we're going back to item 5C. Uh, notice is hereby given the Town of Burlington Conservation Commission will hold a public meeting during which time we have a request for determination of applicability filed by Aiden Khalifa. The commission will take all information related to the proposed installation of a bog bridge on existing trails within bordering vegetative wetlands and the 100 foot buffer zone to bordering vegetative wetlands at the Sawmill Brook Conservation Area and Fox Hill School property in Burlington. Uh, we will thereafter issue a determination. The application is being heard under the State Wetlands Protection Act and Burlington Bylaw Article 14 and a copy of the applications available by emailing the commission. All right, so do we have someone here for that project please? Okay, nice to see you. Nice to see you, thank you. All right, so state your name for the record and uh, please tell us anything you would like as a summary. All right, so, well, thank you for meeting with me. My name is Aiden Khalifa. I'm a senior at Burlington High School and I'm an Eagle candidate, a part of Burlington's Troop 103. I'm working on my service project for the Salmo Conservation Area and for the Conservation Department. And my project is to build walkways so our citizens can better enjoy our conservation area. Um, so moving on to where they're gonna be. So looking at this trail defined by another Eagle project a few years ago that you approved, um, it's gonna be along the red trail right over here. Right. right. Um, these are the type of bridges or elevated walkways or bog bridges um, that I'm gonna use. So we'll have concrete footers to allow the water to flow nice and easily through it will be nice and high up, and they'll be about two feet wide and eight feet across. I plan to install eight of them. So one of them is gonna be on this existing bridge right here. We're just gonna extend it and repair the damage that has been done due to the erosion and stuff. 
then four bridges are going to be placed along over here. As you can see, there's this very rickety um, old pressure treated bridge that was placed there by the locals a while ago, and it's not very effective for allowing our citizens to enjoy the conservation land. So there's going to be eight bridges right over there to cross that gap right there. And then lastly, we're going to have three bridges over this small puddle over here. Again, right over and a little past the muddy areas. Um, they'll be secured by metal strapping. So on the cinder blocks, there'll be metal strapping looping the pressure treated planks to the cinder blocks right there. And also a part of my project is the metal sign by Fox Hill will be updated with the new walkways and a more accurate update on the map. All right, well, that sounds like quite a project. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Eileen, do you have- a project that should be improved. Do you have Thank any you. comments, please? I think it's done this one. So um, as you recall, Aiden's been working on this, this project for quite a while, whose original intention was to improve the trail that goes from Erin Lane into, this, into the conservation area. However, um, the gas company wouldn't allow them to do the work in there. So we sort of um, shifted the, shifted the uh, project a little bit to, uh, to do this instead. So these are all areas that the trail's really wet. Um, however, none of these areas are probably border, bordering vegetated wetlands. They're just areas where the trail gets really pretty soggy. Um, and um, they're both on the Sawmill Brook Conservation Area and part of it's also on the Fox Hill School property. Um, but it's a great project. Okay, do you have any issues at all need to be discussed? None at all. All right, so uh, yeah, for the commissioners present, Kent, do you have any further comment? Oh, it's like a fantastic project. Bill? I, I do. Um, Brompton High School student. You're not recognized. Oh. Sir, sir, you're not recognized. Well, Bill, please. Uh, are you using the same materials as, as the previous uh, bridge that was... There. Yes, I will be using the same materials, but I won't be constructing them in the same way. So we'll have two pressure treated eight foot planks and then um, 16 ASIC board planks to create each walkway section. Okay. And do you anticipate any kind of tree cutting or anything necessary to do the work you're doing? No, no tree cutting. Very good. I think it's an excellent project. I walked there myself and it can get pretty sloppy at times. So I would appreciate those walkways. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Ed. These pictures that you showed in relation to the water, does it get any worse than that? Yes, it does get much worse than that. You're compensating for that by bringing it up. Yes. All right, Don, anything on this one? Nothing to add. Okay, I think you said no, right? Yeah. I said nothing to add. Nothing to add. How about Indra? Anything? No, it's a great job. Very good. Thank you. All right. I think this is a tremendous project. It's very valuable to make a, the walkway far more the walkways far more pleasant. Okay. Uh, all right. So we have a negative conditional decision, which means if you adhere to a few conditions, then it means that the project, if it's approved, is approved. So we're going to review it and then vote. All right. Okay. I sent you a copy earlier, but it was, I don't know if you saw it. Right. Um, so this is an Eagle Scout project by Scout Aiden Khalifa. The applicant proposed to install eight elevated boardwalks over muddy patches on an existing trail within bordering vegetated wetlands and buffer zone in the Sawmill Brook Conservation Area and on Fox Hill Road School property, and to install three new posts and signs and replace four signs at the area entrances, gas line, and bridge. The proposed work was located within the 100-foot buffer zone to bordering vegetated wetlands. No new trails are proposed. All work is proposed to upgrade and protect the existing trails by adding boardwalks. So the commission is voting um, a, a, to issue a negative determination of applicability only for work as described tonight. Um, no tree removals are permitted under this determination. There should be no cutting of pressure treated lumber within bordering vegetated wetlands. All wood scraps shall be removed and disposed of properly. The commission reserves the right to require additional erosion control measures in the event they or the administrator deem them necessary. And this also just says that the um, uh, members of the commission or their representatives may just check on the pro project as it's ongoing. All right, do you have any questions on, on this at all? No, I don't have any questions. 
it's a very minimal set of conditions that's only needed. All right. So is anything further from the commission? Therefore, could I have a motion to approve a negative conditional determination uh, for the project at Sawmill Brook Conservation Area uh, by Aiden Khalifa under Burlington Bylaw Article 14 in the State Wetlands Protection Act? So moved. No. Second. Ed. All right. So, Ed, how do you vote? Yes. Don? Yes. Indra? Yes. Kent? Yes. Bill? Yes. And the chair votes yes by a vote of 600. Zero, zero. That's unanimous. Your project's approved. Thank you so much. Okay. Good Thank luck with the project. Thank you for all your effort. Thank you. Well Good done, Aiden. Good night, yes. everyone. All right. It should be noted. That All right, so now next on the agenda. It should be noted uh, that Burlington High School item, students item, uh, should come forth D. and present more, more, more initiatives. Okay, notice is hereby given the Town of Burlington Conservation Commission will hold a public meeting <clears throat> during which time uh, we will take information on a request for determination of applicability filed by Jeremy Brockman. The commission will take information related to the proposed site work, including pavement and curbing repair and bollard installation within the Vinebrook Riverfront area. The project is located at 22A Street in Burlington. Uh, the applications being heard under the State Wetlands Protection Act in Burlington Bylaw Article 14. And if you require information, you can email the commission. What do you come to? Okay, so are you Mr. Brockman? Oh, shoot. Hi, uh, my name is Bill Doyle from C1.0 Engineering. Um, I'm here with uh, Mr. Jeremy Brockman and Mr. Denise Peed, uh, the architect, so the owner and the architect of the project. Um, as you guys may know, the property is located, if you see the locust map, the property is located at the corner of A Street and Middlesex Turnpike. <clears throat> see, it's the one highlighted in the blue there. Uh, it's a, a retail, one-story retail, uh, not retail, commercial building. Um, if you want to go to the next slide, yeah. we'll just kind of zoom into the site. So we're here for an RDA, Request for Termination Applicability, uh, for the project. What we are doing, as far as the site goes, is <clears throat> the existing parking lot is going to be rehabbed. This is the existing condition plans. It looks very much like the proposed condition plans. Um, what we do have on the far right-hand side, you can see the 100-foot riparian, inner riparian area. Uh, that's not on property. We are in the riparian area between 100 and 200. So the jurisdictional area is that outer riparian area. The other jurisdictional area is the flood zone. Um, there, are these, uh, there's a um, zone X flood zone on the property, uh, which we know is not, you know, there's no elevation associated with it, with it but essentially that's where the FEMA line is. Uh, the building is the one-story building, so basically to the right side or the east and the south, as this is oriented, are the two jurisdictional areas. Uh, this is the existing condition plan. The proposed condition plan is going to look very similar. Um, it's a little bit more cleaned up. Basically, what we're doing in the uh, do you have a pointer, and you see the. I guess it does. Uh, the, the, the there it is. Okay, so. Uh, we're redoing this front entrance, this front entrance way here, uh, installing some bollards. All, all this is paved now. All the external area is paved today. We plan to repave it, grind, overlay, and repave. We'll pit, you know, fat, you know, patch up potholes and that type of thing. Um, but basically, uh, repave the whole the whole driveway, the whole parking lot, restripe it. Uh, the entrance that you saw over to the right hand side. We're going to add some bollards there just to protect the entrance. And to the left-hand side or the the west, uh, there's going to be an ADA accessible ramp that actually that that connects to an entranceway here and zigzags. If you follow my cursor, zigzags down this way to the elevation of the parking lot. Um, so again, it's a it's a grind and overlay, and it's basically dressing up the two entrances. No <clears throat> no additional pervious area. The grading you see here is basically the exact same grading as the existing conditions. We're not changing any of the grading uh, across the property, even though the only flood zone, you know, is that is that purple line there. Yeah. Basically, it's a, it ends up being a maintenance project with the inclusion of those two entrances. Um, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Good. Good summary. Thank you. Thanks. All right, Eileen or John, do you have comments on this one, please? I don't have very much to add. I think I think this this these graphics made it really clear. 
Uh, there, it's a pretty, it's a relatively minor project in the outer riparian mostly. He's adding some you know, concrete work, as he explained, you know, the planters and the bollards and, um, and a, an ADA accessible ramp. He's going to be improving some um, some landscaping, and actually, he's going to clean the catch basins as well. Yeah, yeah. One thing I didn't mention is which is areas drained been improved because I'm pretty sure those catch basins haven't been cleaned in probably forever. Uh, he's going to be doing some mill and overlay, um, but um, I guess close to the floodplain, but it's not going to affect the the level of the floodplain. So it's not. I'm not concerned about the floodplain, but this um, it's in the riverfront, so it, it had to. We had to do a. He had to do an application. Yeah. Okay. I, I think the fact that the catch basins are being cleaned is a good thing. All right. Uh, so let's uh, go with Kent first. Do you have any comments on this one? Uh, Bill? How many catch basins are there on the property? Um, there's, I think there's a total of three catch basins and there's a couple of manholes. And as you grind and overlay, we'll be repairing all of the, the rims on those anyway, just because they're gonna shut their shift in around. They probably already shifted around over the years. Um, so I think there's three catch basins on the property. One is kind of central to the parking lot. And then the others are close to the entrance way. It all kind of, the, the grading goes actually kind of oddly, you know, towards the building and out the entrance way. So that's where the catch basins are. Good, thank you. Otherwise, I think it's at no, it's minimum disturbance. Yeah, 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 yeah. the entrance is just, just, just showing you that. Go on, anything? Nothing to add. Nothing, okay. How about Indra? Uh, just one uh, clarification. So you are doing the overlay, so no elevation change, correct? So we're going to grind. Basically, you grind up with a with a large uh, grinder machine. We'll grind up, you know, the the top course, um, and you know there'll be potholes and stuff that need to be fixed and dug out a little deeper. But essentially, we'll grind off the top, you know, two or three inches, and then put back, you know, the two or three inches of uh, of uh, of pavement. Okay, so no change. So it goes it goes down and then comes back up. No change exactly. Thank you. All right, I have one question: Is there how much waste material is there from cold planing and and that that operation. Oh boy, I'd have to do the calculation. It'll be like it'll be like an inch and a half. That's what I'm asking. Yeah, yeah. So the depth will be like an inch and a half, inch to an inch and a half. And um, what do you do with the waste material? So it'll, <laughs> oddly enough, it gets it'll get trucked off site. It's con I don't want to say it's considered a hazardous waste, but it's considered considered a controlled waste. And essentially, what they do with it is they'll grind it up, they'll take it away, they'll bring it to the batching plant, and they'll mix it in with the next batch and sell it back to somebody. <laughs> it's great because they charge you to take it away and then they charge you to bring it back. <laughs> it's a great business. Yes, isn't it? Coming and going, they get your boat. Yep, it's it's America. All right. Uh, all right. So, if, if, is there any other questions from anyone on the commission? All right. We have a draft decision. Yes. Okay. Um, so the applicant proposed to resurface that's mill and overlay the existing parking lot, install a concrete entrance ramp to the building, concrete walkway with vertical granite curb and bollards, reconstruct a sidewalk ramp, providing a new concrete curb and clean existing catch basins and manholes. Uh, the concrete work was located within the outer 100 feet of the Riverbrook area of riverfront area of Vinebrook, while the parking lot resurfacing was partially within the buffer to BBW and within bordering land subject to flooding, that's BLSF. Uh, the commission is voting to issue a ne negative determination uh, only for the project as described tonight. Prior to beginning any other construction on site, sediment barriers shall be installed per reference plan using mulch, socks, or similar as a sediment barrier. Uh, those shall remain in place while the work is being done. All construction, demolition materials, and excavated soil should be disposed of off site in a legal manner to be resold, apparently. Uh, there should be no stockpiling of soil or other materials within the flood zone nor within the riverfront area. No tracking of sediments onto public roadways shall be allowed, and if it occurs, you should sweep it up. There should be no increase in impervious area under this determination, and there should be no change of existing grades within BLSF. That's the floodplain under this determination. All existing catch basins shall be cleaned and inspected, and the catch basins shall be um, protected while work is ongoing. Um, and then it just ends with the, we have the permission to go on site just to check on the project as it's ongoing. All right. Do you, do you have any questions on the draft conditions at all? No, I reviewed them this afternoon and we went back and forth a couple of set. Yep, we're good with them. Yep. Okay. Uh, anything from else from the commission? But I have a motion to issue a negative conditional determination 
uh, under Burlington Bylaw Article 14 and the State Wetlands Protection Act for the project at 22 A Street. So moved, Bill. Second. Ten. All right. Ed, how do you vote? Yes. Don. Yes. Indra. Yes. Kent. Yes. Bill. Yes. And the chair votes yes by a vote of six zero zero. The project for twenty two A Street is approved. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Good night. Appreciate your patience. Yep. Thanks. Yep. Okay. Okay. Item number seven. Notice is hereby given. The Town of Burlington Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing during which time uh, it's related to a notice of intent filed by Nuria Energy Corporation Thanks. for the demolition Excellent. of the existing restaurant building and an existing gas station convenience store and the construction of a new gas station and convenience store at 59 slash 61 Middlesex Turnpike. The proposed work Second. in the riverfront area in the 100 foot buffer zone to bordering vegetative wetlands and bank pursuant to the State Wetlands Protection Act and Burlington Bylaw Article 14. The commission will review all information relative to the application and thereafter may issue an order of conditions slash wetlands permit uh, for the project. The application uh, material is available by going to the conservation website and pressing on the appropriate link to view all those materials. All right. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. For the record, Tim McGuire, I'm a wildlife biologist and wetland scientist with Goddard Consulting here on behalf of Nuria Energy. Um, I'm joined as well by Andy Platt from Bowler, our team's engineer. Um, so regarding this project, you may have heard the news. We were recently issued a certificate of compliance for the project, opening it up for additional permitting. So we're here before you for a similar permit as to what we previously requested to construct a gas station and associated convenience store on the property off Middlesex Turnpike. There's an existing parking lot associated with a gas station out there now, as well as in um, a closed restaurant on site. And we're working on uh, pulling up the site plans we could show. Um, yeah, I was just wondering what you wanted. So yeah, there, there's actually a colored up one in there too. Oh, is it down here is one of the, so yeah, if, yeah. what I mean is. I can point to exactly which one. Sorry, wrong one. It's all good. One of these? Yes. Oh, sorry. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I'll share this right now. Thank you very much. So as, as we get the site plan up, on-site resource areas consist of the perennial stream Vine Brook casting riverfront area onto the entirety of the parcels. Yep. Thank you. We have um, the site plan up. You can see the plan is oriented um, to the northeast. So Vine Brook right there to the northeast, as well as bordering vegetated wetlands associated with that casting buffer zone jurisdiction onto the property um, as well. Contrarily to the previous permit that we were approved for for this property, our new construction is going to result in a net decrease in existing impervious surfaces on site. We're before you under um, 10.585, the redevelopment standards for riverfront area. And as well as that, we're providing the net benefit to the property, increasing green space with approximately 140 shrubs and I forget how many trees, I believe 20. Trees, you can see those on the fringe areas of the property behind the proposed building and to the north um, on the left hand side of the property. So, again, net decrease in impervious surface, net increase in vegetation and green space as a result of the construction. We've submitted a set of site plans to you, and then afterwards, we made some slight revisions in light of previous comments from the town, including moving the underground storage tanks, which were previously um, to the east of the gas station set up in the middle of the site plan there, and we moved them to the north, putting them further away from uh, any on-site resource areas, as well as some minor revisions. Stormwater, we are, um, it's our belief that we're compliant under the Wetlands Protection Act, the local bylaw, as well as meeting the stormwater standards for the property. Again, um, resulting in a net benefit for the site and allowing it to be developed instead of sitting in its uh, existing conditions. So I believe, um, Andy, unless you had anything else, I'd be happy to address any questions or concerns from the commission and public. I think you covered it. So. Okay. Uh, John or Eileen, please, for comments. Um, well, I think it would be good if there was a, a, an ex a discussion about, I think it would be good if there was a discussion about the stormwater management. Okay. Sure. Uh, the stormwater management is essentially the same as it was the last time in 2019. So all the runoff will be captured by, by catch basins with deep sumps routed to a um, 
underground, well, the, the roof water will go to an under, underground infiltration basin along with the canopy roof runoff. So that's all, it's all considered clean runoff. The uh, catch basins will be routed to a water quality unit and it all goes to the cell, to that existing swale. It's almost exactly the same as uh, previously approved. Just the only difference is the infiltration basin is in a slightly different location. So the infiltration basin is on the north side? Um, plan north, but yeah, it's actually the east side. The side north is uh, to the left on this hemisphere. East side, okay. Um, so, so under the riverfront redevelopment um, regulations, there have to be improvements in the riverfront area um, and it should meet the stormwater standards to the maximum extent practicable. Um, the reduction in impervious surface would certainly qualify as an improvement in the riverfront area. Um, and the stormwater standards are probably being met by infiltrating the rooftop and the canopy runoff. Um, whether or not that's to the maximum extent practicable is really for you to decide. So none of the proposed pavement is being proposed to be infiltrated. What was that last comment? None of the, none of the pavement is proposed to be infiltrated. It'll all just be captured in catch basins, then routed through a um, some sort of proprietary structure, the hydrodynamic separator, I believe, and then discharged into the wetlands. So um, I guess the question would be whether or not it's possible to increase the amount of infiltration on the site. So in, in addition to just infiltrating the rooftop, if some of the parking lot could also be infiltrated after pretreatment. Uh, could could you explain the difference between why the old one was closed out? I mean, maybe I missed it and you said it. The old one was closed out and the new one has been filed for the same site. So the, the board issued the certificate of compliance as no work commenced for the previous permit. But why didn't you continue with the previous? I'm sorry? There was an issue with the planning board. So the planning board never approved the previous project. Oh, so it had to be withdrawn. It was eventually withdrawn, I believe, correct? Yes, it was. Correct. Yeah. All right. So it had to be withdrawn because of the planning board. Correct. So we approved it. Correct. Right. So this is a different layout. We can fix that. All right. All right. So uh, let's, uh, let's, what we'll do is we'll take, you may not be able to answer every question, but we'll make a list of the questions and then you can submit the answers if you need to. Uh, but let's see where this goes, okay? Maybe we'll have a list, maybe we won't. All right, so, uh, Kent, do you have anything on this one? All right, Ed. I'm still reviewing. Yeah. Okay, you can come back, okay? Uh, Bill. Where is the treatment for the pavement runoff? Does it go through, I mean, I see catch basins and I'm having trouble finding where it actually gets any kind of treatment other than a cage base, catch basin. Yep, to the to the bottom right of the building. So the lower right of the plan, there's going to be a circle there with a D in it. Yeah. I should say storm, stormwater quality unit. Um, yeah. That's where the, the water all gets routed to, to the further to the right. It's off the, off the view there. So right there. Um, we, I don't see it either. Looking for it, yeah. You can point it out. Yeah, it might be helpful if you can. Yeah. That's right. Is this one? Yeah. Yeah. It's this one right here. It says um, homeless manhole D. Yeah. It's actually a water quality unit. Okay. So it's not, it doesn't say water quality unit on the drawer. So it's kind of hard to find, I guess. That's why it was hard to find. Yeah. All right. So it's going to the catch basins to a water quality unit and then discharging into the brook. Not directly to the brook, but to a swale that leads to the brook. A swale that leads to the brook. Yep. And the water quality unit's been sized in accordance with DEP guidelines. And just backing up to the recharge a little bit, we, we do meet the recharge guidelines for DEP also. So this, this is compliant with the stormwater guidelines for, for DEP. Okay, let's, before we leave that, let's, let's, let's take one thing at a time. Sure. Uh, is the swale doing any kind of infiltration? Uh, and uh, why not? It may be, but we didn't account for any kind of infiltration within the swale. We, everything was, what we have control over is in the site. That's what we took account for. Uh, that's what we accounted for for the infiltration. Could it could it be designed for infiltration? Would that be an improvement? 
the, the existing swale to the south? Yes. Um, that's not really something we considered. I suppose it could be, but it's not, it's, you'd start adding more disturbance, uh, I would assume, if you started looking at that. Uh, we, we meet the regulations without needing to, to infiltrate within the swale. Okay. Okay, and Bill, we want to continue? Yeah, I had one other question uh, regarding the drainage around the canopy area. I think I had understand it now, but when I looked at the drawing, I thought those drains were on the ground under the canopy. They're not, they're actually, they're not pavement drains. They're actually catching the, the rooftop runoff of the canopy. Is that Correct, they're downspouts, yep. Okay, and there are just things like this, six of them all together. Okay. Um, that's all the questions I have at this time. All right, Don. And just go, going back to the so-called swale. Um, yeah. Because because the site is so difficult, we didn't really review the flags. Uh, so it's not, it's not certain that the wetland doesn't extend up into that area. Certainly during high level, mean annual high water of Vinebrook, the water backs up into that area. Yes. Um, and it may be there long enough so that that's actually a wetland. So in other words, wetland flags A2 and A3, um, I'm not absolutely certain that those are accurate and that the wetland could, could extend up into that area that they're referring to as a swell. What's the implication of that statement? Um, the only implication is that I certainly wouldn't want them going in there and doing any work. If, the, if it's a well. Yeah. All right, so you're suggesting it may not be advisable to do anything further with that swell. Correct. All right, that's what, I, okay, I wanna know where that was going. Okay, Don, do you have anything? No, I don't have anything else. Okay, Indra. Uh, yes, the the size of the building, the new building, is that bigger or smaller of the previous one, which was approved? Uh, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but I believe it's slightly larger. Slightly larger. Okay. Slightly, but yeah. Back to that question, which I think um, John asked: uh, Why don't you infiltrate uh, from the pavement pavement area? Instead of using the you know infiltration system and quality device, I'm sorry, I didn't quite understand. Did, did you look into the infiltration from the pavement area? Oh, well, it wasn't it wasn't necessary because we meet the guidelines, um, and then you need additional treatment prior to infiltration of of pavement water. So it, it just made sense to put the canopy and the roof into there, which which provides the necessary recharge. Which actually exceeds um, there, there's dry wells on the site right now, so the proposed infiltration actually exceeds what's out there right now. I see. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, I have a couple of questions for you. Uh, the first one is, why would you not infiltrate the parking lot runoff, and then, uh, and then just discharge through the swale or something, or somehow discharge the the uh, you know the canopy and the rooftop stuff. You know, in other words, switch how you're doing it. Well, it's it's easier. The, the roof run runoff and the canopy runoff are considered clean runoff, so it doesn't need treatment. Right. That way, you can put it straight into the infiltration basin, whereas the, the pavement would need treatment. So you'd have to reroute the pipes. You'd have a more complicated pipe network, and it, it just. But but I'd almost rather see a clean dis a cleanest discharge of the rooftop runoff going into the stream and the wetlands, as opposed to uh, the stuff off of the parking lot, which is dirty. I'd rather have and then keep it on site and infiltrate it, and then have some kind of maintenance for the little bit of stuff that fills up into your infiltration area. Why wouldn't you do that? I'm not saying I know it's better. I'm just asking this question because it seems to me I'd rather have clean water discharged into the into the stream. Yeah, no, I understand your point. Um, in this case, you know, in our opinion, the, the runoff from the parking lot is is clean, uh, meets meets all the guidelines, you know, all the requirements. Let me ask our staff see if they agree with you. <laughs> uh, John and Eileen, do you? I mean, is there? Any merit to what I'm saying uh, that I'm throwing out there? Well, sure. I mean, 
infiltration provides additional treatment that you wouldn't get by discharging directly. I mean, you may consider it clean, but it's not as clean as it would be if it were infiltrated. Um, infiltrating stormwater does a, a number of things. One, one thing it does is um, helps mitigate peak flows. And um, there's certainly down gradient of this site is there's a floodplain and there's, there's a lot of properties that, that are in the floodplain. So there's no, you're not proposing to do any uh, detention. You're just strictly doing infiltration. So one of the things we're trying to do is reduce the volume and rate of runoff from the site. Water quality is important as well, but we're just trying to mitigate for all the pavement that we have in this area. Um, we have a project, the next project on the agenda is a similar redevelopment site and they're proposing to infiltrate basically all the runoff entirely, you know, virtually and reduce their existing peak rates and volumes of runoff to practically zero. Um, so I'm just wondering why couldn't something like closer to that be possible on this site? Hang on a minute. May I introduce myself and speak? Yeah. Is this a live mic or? I don't, you can, uh, I don't, knows? I don't think so. I, I, speak, I can speak loudly, so hopefully that's acceptable. That would be. Uh, good evening, uh, Pat McLaughlin with Norea Energy. Um, I appreciate you having us here. And um, yeah, you know, some of the factors that went into the design that we have before you, um, well, primarily being uh, that we were going off of what was previously approved. So obviously we understand that additional topics can come up. And so we're happy to evolve the, the design accordingly. Um, to speak towards some of the, the stormwater stuff, uh, I'm a licensed engineer myself and have practiced uh, engineering in New, throughout New England. Uh, and so I'm gonna try and do my best. It's been a few years since I've uh, done technical stormwater design, but in, in my experience working with multiple, uh, you know, gas, gas and convenience store end users uh, in multiple states here in New England uh, before becoming part of the Norea team directly, um, it was always industry practice not to infiltrate uh, surface water from the LUPL, which is the land use with high potential pollutant load. So gas stations qualify under that definition of use uh, here in Massachusetts. Um, so typically the, the standard would be for our types of uses to infiltrate quote unquote clean roof and canopy runoff and forego doing that exercise for the pavement surface areas associated with that LUPL use. We have on larger projects, say where there's a a drive-through lane that might wrap around the back of a building that's separated by some grade breaks in the pavement, high spots. We could consider that out of the LUPL use area and infiltrate rear portions of paved surfaces. So that was some practices that we've done. Um, in this case, what, what's interesting through this conversation is that in New Hampshire, DES won't allow you to, to infiltrate a gas site, period. Mass does. So if that was the preference of this board, we could add infiltration for this project and, and bring up the site recharge number. We would prefer not to because we tend to agree with New Hampshire DES that infiltration of, of surface runoff from the, the pavement areas of a gas site um, is, is not the best engineering practice. We would do it if that was the board's preference. Uh, do you, do you know, can you characterize why it's not a good practice? I just think it, it leads to um, uncertainty as to where that has gone. But what's, what, what I was going to say is the caveat to that is that your point was that we discharge to a, a, a surface resource area. So at the end of the day, I think it's the board's preference as to which way we could go with that. If the board would like us to infiltrate, there are sites that we currently have that that have stormwater infiltration systems, so it's it's not unheard of. Like I said, it's just more often than not we would sit or present in front of a board or sit with a a, a technical review committee that might say, "Oh, we'd rather see you do the roofs." So I think that's where we're at with why you have the design in front of you, but we're happy to to accommodate. Could you define the acronym? You said LAPL site. Oh, LAPL, yeah, land use with high potential pollutants. That's what I thought you were referring to. I, I, <laughs> I didn't recognize how it was pronounced. Like, okay, that's fine. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that input. Uh, 
Yeah. So in addition, in addition to a level, it's also in a critical area. It's in the, the zone two of the, the town's drinking water supply, obviously. Um, so, so the choice is um, doing pretreatment and discharging essentially to Vine Brook, which is like a few few feet away from that swale, which requires the 80% TSS removal just to discharge into the surface water or infiltrate, which requires 44% TSS removal. So, I mean, technically it's not that difficult to, to clean it up, to infiltrate. So, um, I mean, I think you should ask them to explore it. Can I speak? There's no, no, and there's certainly yeah, time. Please. Can you open with the planning board? We're still talking, uh, we'll, we'll get there. Please be patient. Yeah, it's whenever. Yeah, the third, I think. Is no, third of November, okay. So there, there's plenty of time. They, they don't meet to, with the planning board till after our next meeting. Okay, so it's, you know, I'll, I'll just make two comments. One is, it seems like um, uh, that we should table this for have you guys take a look at it, please. And second is I, I'm always mindful of the fact that it discharges into Vinebrook. Vinebrook discharges, I believe, into the Shawsheen, is that correct? That's y'all's problem. Vinebrook grows in the Shawsheen. And during some times of year, we pump it into our mill pond uh, and drink the water after appropriate treatment. And other people- Which you cannot do. Other people- You can't drink the water. Other people downstream do the same thing. They use it for our drinking water. So it's worth- You cannot drink the water, man. It's, it's Don't lie. It. Please, you're not recognized. Uh, could you please uh, put it on the list uh, to take a look at it, please, and see what can be done? All right. Uh, I'll, I'll do that. Okay, the other, the other question uh, I had is, are you uh, removing the existing fencing in back? And are you are you reusing it, keeping it in place? No, it's going to be removed. And it, another fence is going to be put up. Yeah. Yes, we can put another. Fence. Uh, is there any specification that because of the nature of the site, it's going to be a convenient map, right? right? Is there any specification on that fence that it's going to come down to the ground so all the stuff doesn't blow underneath during uh, you know a heavy wind, and any other paper stuff blows underneath right into the stream? Uh, do you have any specification, or if you don't, should you add that specification? Yeah, we can definitely provide that specification, eliminating any kind of, any kind of gap to the ground. Yeah, because I don't want it to have it where the trash just blows underneath into the into the bank and into the stream. Okay. I think we had conditions on the previous order to that effect, and we can we can certainly do it again. Okay. You all should be privileged and proud that a business is coming to town. All right. So next, uh, let's see. Does further, anybody or further on the commission have comments about this? Is there anything else from the staff that we need them to look into? No. Okay. And then I have one question. How do you characterize? You're supposed to have improvement because it's a riverfront area. How do you characterize? How would you express the the improvement required by the regulations? Are you for the, for the riverfront area? So, in its existing conditions, there's, as far as I'm aware, there's no stormwater management currently on site. As a result of this proposal, we will be infiltrating the water as Andy's um, gone into detail on from the roofs. In addition to that, we're decreasing <coughs> on site. There's a significant reduction in the pavement area as a result of this proposal. And with that, we're not only removing it, but we're adding hundreds of native plantings in as well. So, we believe that that standard has been met. There's no changes to the limit of work that are increasing any further to the riverfront area or expanding the pavement really in any areas. So we think that that reduction, the addition of stormwater management, as well as the uh, substantial planting scheme will uh, satisfy the requirements in 10.585. Okay, good. Thank you for that summary. Appreciate it. Can I make one more comment about the infiltration just as soils on site? I think if we take a close look at the grading plan, you're going to see that we're actually removing the existing soils on the site because they aren't really suitable for infiltration. So that's the reason why the infiltration is somewhat limited. So we actually have to take the existing fill out of the site and replace it with something better. So that's why the system is relatively small, although it still meets the regulations. So asking for more infiltration, and we can definitely take a look at it, but it's going to be the same situation. That will come out when you look at it just a little bit more detail. Okay. I understand. 
Okay, so is there anyone in the audience for 5961 Middlesex Turnpike? We're gonna- Yes, do me. Not yet, I'll get to you. Comments from the audience, please. Is there anyone? Okay, this is a public hearing. I can take comments from the web. Anybody would like to state your name and then speak for three minutes. George Bassler, how you doing, y'all? Good. Good. Yeah, I like that Irish girl, man. She's good. Let me tell you something, bro. You're blaming local businesses for coming to town and, and trying to redevelop for the water in town. Are you batshit crazy? That's a question. You can answer if you want. Uh, please state whatever you would like to state. This uh, is for you to state stuff. Well, it's none of your goddamn business what they want to do. Let them go to town, build their businesses, and uh, have fun. What do you think about that? Yeah? Thank All you. Right, but thank you for the comment. No problem. Is there, is there anyone else? Wake up. All right. So what we have is uh, a short list of things to look at. Uh, I, just, I just have one more question. Yes. Do you require some for like the express priority? Do you require some for like plantings? Like if they're gonna do some type, I don't know, it's based on the rest, like the restoration plantings or like some type of like growing season on them. I guess I have to check in. Are they really landscaping landscape plantings? Yep. All right. So what what I heard is. Uh, uh, John, what I've heard is that we're going to take a look at the infiltration arrangement. Uh, is there anything else on the list? I think that's it. Um, uh, you were concerned about fencing. I put a note that we'll add it to the conditions. Um, yeah, that was about it so far. Yep. That's about it. Yeah. All right. So uh, you're going before the planning board when? Yeah, 3rd of November. Third of November. Okay, so we are at the thirteenth. So should we, perhaps? I don't know if it's advisable to close before they even hear it. No. No, we we'd be acceptable of making sure the planning board doesn't have a change that would impact your order. Right. Yeah. So we will see you. Uh, so should we continue to November tenth? All right. Uh, and I guess. Uh, John and Eileen, will you make a determination on whether, based on what happens, we might be able to close at that time? Okay. Okay. An issue. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So, uh, could I have a motion to continue the public hearing for Nuria Energy 5961 Middlesex Turnpike to November, the meeting of the commission, November 10th, 2022? Is there a motion to that effect? Moved it. Second? Second. Ken. Okay. Ed, how do you vote? Yes. Don? Yes. Indra? Yes. Kent? Yes. Bill? Yes. The chair votes yes by a vote of 600. The hearing for 5961 Middlesex Turnpike is continued until November 10th. Thank okay. you very Thank much. You. Have a good okay. day. Thank you very much. All right. So now. Okay, we're on number eight. Let's see. All right, notice is hereby given. The Town of Burlington Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing. Uh, and uh, that uh, the purpose of this public hearing is to take information related to a notice of intent. It's filed by Mark Hawkinson of Clipper Holdings LLC for the demolition of an existing commercial building and the construction of a new commercial oil change facility at 49 Middlesex Turnpike. The proposed work would be within the 100 foot buffer zone for bordering vegetative wetlands pursuant to the State Wetlands Protection Act and Burlington Bylaw Article 14. The commission will review information relative to the application and may issue an order of conditions and wetlands permit. The application material is available on the commission's website uh, and you just go to the link and the materials will come up. 
All right, people, good evening. Good evening. All right, so you ought to go through the introductions of who is here with you, uh, and then the floor will be yours. That's Hi. fine. Uh, right, Bill Lucas with Bowler Engineering, and this is Angelo Bado of Bowler also. She will be giving the bulk of the presentation. We also have Mark Hawkinson of Clipper Holdings here with us tonight. Um, and we'll do our best to keep him out of the conversation, but if we need him, uh, he will join. Uh, this is our first hearing with Burlington for this project. Uh, we are scheduled to be uh, before the planning board for special permit uh, on November 3rd. With that said, uh, I think I can turn it over to Angela as she has all the particulars. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Let me just move to the next slide. Yeah. So here's our site. It's located on Middlesex Turnpike, true north points towards the. We have to. The, the microphones aren't doing well at all. Those microphones no, they're, they're not working. Just, I can't have to talk loud. Yeah, just I can talk louder. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to talk loud. Yes. So the parking lot um, on plan left that is true north. There's also commercial properties um, towards the right hand side, and then up towards where you see the woods, that's where the wetlands are located. Um, can we just flip to the next one? Yep. So this is our survey of the site. It's an existing 0.45 acre site. It's very small. It currently um, operates as Ned's Automotive Repair Service. As we could see from the last slide, um, a majority of the site is paved with a little bit of landscaping on that abutting side. Um, the site is located in Burlington's um, general industrial district, and it's also located in a zone two, which we'll touch on a bit more with the stormwater. Currently, the roof runoff goes directly to Middlesex Turnpike or back to the wetlands. Can we move to the next one? So this is our proposed plan. We are proposing a 1500 square foot take five oil change facility. We've highlighted that in the gray box. We are proposing parking areas and two entrances from Middlesex Turnpike, as well as associated utilities, and then a stormwater management system. Um, we'll take a look at that stormwater on the next slide. So here is our system. We are proposing a stormwater management system with the installation of modern stormwater BMPs and the implementation of a O&M plan. So we have graded our site to those four catch basins. Those are our low points. And then we're piping both of those to our water quality units which will then pipe into our subsurface infiltration system. So this design has resulted in a reduction of peak rates and volumes within the two, 10, 25, and 100 year storms. And since the um, area was mapped as a zone two, this was sized based on one inch of water quality volume. Um, if you can zoom out a little bit, we can then see the limit of work. We've shown that in the gray line along our property line. Since we will be removing a lot of the pavement towards that north area, we do have the limit of work shown as that. Um, but we will be adding in green space, taking out the pavement and adding in. And then we have also proposed um, compost filter tubes and silt fence along that limit of work line in order to protect those wetlands in the back there. Could we actually move back one yep. slide? Take a further look at the wetlands. This one? Yes. So this wetland line was delineated by Lucas Environmental in July of 2022, and he identified the Riverfront area, which we see in purple, that's the 200 foot riverfront area, and then a bordering vegetated wetland, which is shown in the blue line. So there's no actual resource areas on our site, but there is the associated buffers, which we have shown the 20 foot green, the 50 foot in orange, and then 100 foot in yellow. 
So we are proposing work within these developed areas and we are proposing a 35 square feet of building within the, four, the 40 foot? 50 foot. 50. 50 foot. No building. Um, there's currently 667 square foot of building in that. So we are reducing that. Yep, yeah, right there. <laughs> um, so currently the existing building is 33 feet from the wetland and we're proposing it at around 42 feet. So we're pulling it out more from where it is currently. And then overall within the 100 foot buffer, we're proposing 7,300 square feet of impervious, which is an improvement from the existing 9,300 square feet of impervious. So just to conclude, um, so we're requesting this notice of intent for relief for work within the 100 foot buffer zone and for a building within the 50 foot no build zone. Um, we are decreasing the amount of impervious on site. We are increasing the amount of green space on site and we are moving the building further from the BBW. We are also installing a stormwater system to capture runoff um, and we are el not eliminating. We are reducing the amount of runoff currently going to Middlesex Turnpike and out to the wetlands. And with that, do you have anything to add? No, it's great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Great summary. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Eileen or John, if you have some comments on this, please, or issues. Sure. So um, the commission did a site walk there yesterday, and I think um, it was probably unanimous that um, almost anything there would be an improvement over the existing conditions. Um, this, this proposal is certainly a big improvement, um, both with the uh, reduction of pavement uh, in additional green space and also the stormwater management system, which is really, um, it's an ambitious infiltration plan where they're basically infiltrating virtually all the stormwater. The peak rates of runoff and the volumes of runoff are reduced, um, you know, tremendously. Um, so I think it's a great, great design. Now there's one caveat. <laughs> In, just, in talking with the planning director today, she had talked to the Board of Health and they have not reviewed this. Um, and they are under the impression that the site at the very least has down gradient property status and it may have its own uh, issues as far as groundwater contamination. So the Board of Health is certainly going to be reviewing this um, and the feasibility of doing infiltration on this site at all. So, I mean, if this plan, is, is feasible, I think it's great. Um, but the applicant needs to go to the planning, uh, to the Board of Health as part of the planning board procedure and, um, and convince them that um, that contamination isn't some sort of impediment or the, the contamination isn't an impediment to the infiltration. Okay, uh, is there an LSP on this project at all? LSP. So we, we did uh, geotech analysis, we did uh, phase one, phase two study on the site. So we drilled it, have all that analysis, which. So I would note that the, um, so the, the, the um, infiltration information is done from, from borings. It wasn't a test pit witnessed by the Board of Health. They did geotechnical borings and determined um, the depth of the groundwater and whatnot using that. Okay. All right, let's let's go around the commissioners and see if they have any questions. Okay. Uh, uh, Don, any questions? Uh, no, it just seems that we should wait to see what the Board of Health uh, comes up with. Sorry, I couldn't hear. You said, let's see what the Board of Health comes up with. Oh, thank okay. you. Thank you. I have, I have this <laughs> struggle. <laughs> the audio visual isn't bad enough. We have these blowers blowing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, we, we, can, we can barely hear you, Don. Sorry about that. Uh, not entirely your fault, probably. Uh, uh, and who else? Do, Indra. Indra. Indra, do you have anything on this one? No, I think I have the same thing. Let's wait and see what the Board of Health uh, comes up with. No. Okay, uh, Kent. Just, just curious. How many days of oil is it? Like how many days are there going to be? Like oil changes? 
It's a three bay facility on average about 50 cars a day. And you said the building is like going to be bigger or smaller than what's there now, like the repair shop. Small. Yeah. It, it might be on the schematics, but it's smaller. There's no like gas tanks or anything. I mean, no. Oh, there, there's eight or nine uh, polyurethane clear uh, oil storage containers that are above grade, nothing below grade um, within you know, the physical site. Everything's gravity fed. There's no pressurized systems. Um, the only drain in the facility is for the restaurant. Okay. Uh, Ed? I'm not sure, but there was a part in here. Um, there's in ground bay, correct? For drainage of oil out of vehicles? Yep. There's a uh, 30 inch deep trench that's three feet wide and about 15 feet long. There's no basements um, and there's not a single drain except for that. How are they sealed? Uh, I would leave that to the, I'd have to follow back I don't know, I don't know, the building code, uh, the right terminology to share with you, but um, it's made clear that there's a recovery system and nothing uh, is drained. And follow up. The reason I have is when they tore down the Sears building at automotive drop, they had people were saying there's just no, nothing that's going to seep into the ground. And I was watching those shovels while they were there. One spot I saw oil, but it wasn't bad. The yep. fact is concrete does have openings that something can see through. I would leave, you know, I'd have to follow up with you. For okay, sure. well, we put it on the list. That's fine. All right, Bill, I just follow up on what Ed said. How deep are the, underneath the car, the, the bay? 30 inches. 30 inches, so the people under there doing the work are like on their hands and knees. I mean, can't stand up. Right, so, you know, the car will pull in, they'll step down three steps, sit on a bench, reach under, and drain, and there'll be an automatic drain pin where the car will uh, go down to, and then it's a vacuum system um, that pulls the used oil to a recovery system uh, above grade. Okay, so they're actually just going down and sitting under there. They're not trying to Correct. stand or anything else. Okay. Of this, of this brand prototype, they don't want any basements or anything like that. Um, the, the, the improvement on this site would be, you know, dramatic. That's for sure. Uh, I like the, the number of planting that I see that's going to go on there as well. Uh, reiterating the question that we had from the previous one, the existing fence around the outside of the property, is that going to stay or are you going to replace it? It's going to be replaced and the front is going to be a brick fence, a brick fence with wrought iron, a brick pillars with wrought iron fence. Um, we have not, you know, currently around the property, I believe there's a chain link fence, and we have not uh, considered what we're going to do with that yet, but the overall intention is to really clean up the entire site and make it look like a national franchise uh, with a lot more greenery than there is today yeah. for outbuildings. Uh, the the drainage that you're proposing, I mean, the, um, the, the water quality unit you're proposing, it looks gigantic. I mean, it's bigger than a building in, on the drawing. Is that for real? <laughs> That actually the size of it? Are you talking about the underground? Yeah, yeah. No. Quality system, yeah. Yeah, that's the infiltration basin. And again, because we're holding a hundred year storm. Okay. Um, that entire volume, just due to the fact that the way this site drains and the elevation of the site is difficult to try to uh, discharge any water back to the uh, wetland area. And we're also so close to the street with such a large frontage that we're trying to reduce any kind of flow back out onto Middlesex. So our, our best opportunity was to infiltrate the water on the site and uh, move move forward in that manner. Now, obviously, John brought up a different point, um, uh, being that if the Board of Health has an issue with that, that may have to go away, right? And what would happen then? Some kind of modification. I, I, and I, that's why I was kind of bringing this up because I was just curious as to what that direction would be, and and maybe John could provide some thought on that or yeah I mean if you be prohibited from infiltrating you'd have to do detention some type I'm sorry underground detention Under, yeah just a de detention system but then that would put us back into the situation where we actually need to physically discharge that right uh, and you know then we have to make some decisions on whether or not we would be allowed to discharge that out to Middlesex or if we can physically drain it back out to the wetlands 
uh, on the back end of the site, which would be challenging because you really can't grade the site up any higher than what you already have um, and, and get that elevation to be appropriate. So you should try to get in, in uh, touch with the Board of Health as quickly as possible because they don't that often and they'll probably have a subcommittee meeting. We've done the drilling, we have the analysis, so we have everything in hand to have that discussion. Yeah. Uh, so is this area in a floodplain at all? Parcel is not. There is flood. Parcel is flood not in a flood. Kind of. No. No. All right. Um, you know, when I was on the site, uh, I have talked to the chair of the Board of Health, and this is in their area. I'll just tell you what I told them that I saw. Of course, there's and along the fence on the right hand side, there's a bunch of old tires. I'm sure you know that. Okay, they will have to be properly disposed of. I also told them that I saw in the pavement, very slight, it may be nothing, uh, coloration, a, a, a change in coloration on both the soil a little bit and on the, the thing. It probably is nothing. Okay, or it could be a very old spill of some type that they cleaned up or something. I have no idea. But, uh, you know, I did tell them that it looked like a, a, dis, a disjointed discoloration, a very slight one. Okay. Uh, Let me just, so we have done the phase two, the you know, low subsurface investigation of the soil. Um, and there are multiple monitoring wells on the site due to the gas station across the intersection. So the, the groundwater in the soil is being monitored continuously. Okay. And I assume you'll be with Board of Health oversight, you'll be monitoring as the construction of soils and so forth. I assume there'll be some monitoring. I would assume so. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. I'm sure they'll have something to say about it. Yeah. And have you looked at the down gradient property status for the site yet at all? I don't know. That. Okay, what, what that means is, is that is a hazardous waste site somewhere in the area and this property is down gradient. Correct. And yeah, I thought you said down gradient. Thank you. Oh, no, down gradient property status, it's called. It's, it's part of the hazardous waste regulations. Uh, and if that's the case, depending on which way groundwater flows, it may prevent you from uh, prevent you from infiltrating because you don't want to push any contamination along in the wrong direction. Something of that nature. Okay, but the Board of Health, the, the environmental engineer, Christine Mathis, would be taking a close look at that and would give you advice on how to handle it. Thank you. Uh, I, this is a substantial improvement over what's there. I, I guess they don't really have, if, if we can do all this infiltration, this would be great for the site, obviously. All right, now I don't have anything else. So uh, this is a public hearing. Uh, I, uh, the record should show that there's, I don't think there's anybody in the audience that would like to comment on this, if that's present. Is there anybody online that would like to comment on for 49 Middlesex Turnpike? Uh, it is the old Ned's oh. gas station, uh, towing. towing, Ned's towing site that is being placed, uh, uh, is proposed for renovation. What? Oh, I don't see any hands. Okay. All right. So uh, when are you, when are you, uh, Meeting with the Board of Health. We'll schedule that as soon as possible. Planning board was third. Uh, November third at the planning board. Third. So it, it it sounds like there's no uh, uh, pressing issues for you to come back before planning board. So do you want to come back on the November tenth meeting? That feels appropriate. I mean, at that point in time, we should have some indication from the planning board about our special permit. Right. And there may be feedback, potentially feedback from the Board of Health at the same time. Exactly. All right. Is there anything further from anyone else on this? All right. Then could I have a motion to continue the public hearing uh, for 49 Middlesex Turnpike to the November 10th meeting of the Burlington Conservation <clears throat> Commission? 
So moved. Second. 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 Ed. Uh, Ed, how do you vote? Yes. Don. Yes. Indra. Yes. Uh, Ed. Yes. And Bill. Yes. And the chair is yes. By a vote of six zero zero, the hearing for forty nine Middlesex Turnpike is continued until the November tenth meeting of the commission. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Thank. Thank you all for your time. Thank you very much. Oh yeah. I'll do that. Yes. All right, so that was item number nine. Uh, we're on administration stuff. We have planning board comments. Uh, do we have some notes to go to the planning board? Do you think on these projects? Um, I don't really think so. Um, they know about the board of health because they told us. I mean, uh, Nori, I suppose Norio, I could say that the commission's looking for additional infiltration if possible. Right. Perhaps you should send that. Number. Yeah. Okay. Uh, subcommittee and staff reports. Nothing. All right. Uh, other business. Is this the first meeting after uh, town meeting that we have? Uh, yes, it is. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it is. All right. So one item of other business is that the uh, proposed changes to the stormwater bylaw. Uh, were approved by town me meeting by a vote of like two to one overall in favor. Uh, two thirds of them voted for it. And hopefully this will deal with uh, issues of flooding from homes, the large homes that are being built and will have uh, drainage so that the homeowners are assured that are building the homes or the property owners are assured that the uh, infiltration is working and that it won't be causing problems for neighbors or others nearby. That's the advantage. And so the, this was a, a uh, I'll point out for anyone who's watching, this was a six month effort of a lot of effort by our staff. Uh, Eileen took uh, the lead and I have to say thank you very much. It was a job very well done. Uh, and all the others who commented on it. All right, anything else on the other? Um, we have uh, what initiated an adopted rain program. I don't know if anybody saw that on our Facebook or adopted uh, rain. Yeah, so we're hoping that members of the public will adopt uh, a nearby storm drain um, that's local to their house. So we're in a stormwater coalition, and they got some grant money to help all various towns in the coalition to do uh, to map their stormwater. Uh, the sorry to. So that everybody can link to the catch basin nearest their house and they can adopt them and they can name them. And the idea is that they can just keep an eye on them, keep them clean, you know, uh, when there's a storm coming in or if they're, you know, covered with ice and snow, just that because that sort of thing can help alleviate localized flooding. BCAT just reposted, they did a little article for us about, about the storm drains. So, so I want to see the benefits. See everybody let's here adopting your storm drains. Let's say I had dropped. A, a storm drain in my house. Let's, we have, let's call it Herman. What do I do for Herman? Well, there's about 2,600 other Hermans in the town. So the DPW just, there's no way for them to get to all the catch basins if there was a storm coming. So the idea is that Larry would kick all the twigs off uh, or brush all the twigs off, off Herman uh, when, you know, or the leaves when around now, this time of year, but so that the catch basin doesn't get clogged. So that the next time we have a heavy rain, it could actually basically be it, be it clear, helping the town out with that one storm drain you adopt and go through. That's a that is a great idea, yeah. especially in snow season when there's ice and snow. The ice you get a big and rainstorm and they're all it, you know it gets blocked up, yeah. so the flood waters can't That's go down. A really good idea. Have many towns have done done this? Um, Lexington. Quite a, quite a few local towns are probably doing it. Our way we did that and it worked really well, especially people took it personal. Uh, they didn't like back in their car out of the driveway, and there's a water there. They mm -hmm. said, well, it's your drain, fix it. Right. Well, I know that there are some that are named now, so I'm I'm waiting to see Herman appear. <laughs> sounds sounds. Where does one go to sign up for this? Oh, um, it's it's on our website. I hope 
Um, uh, let, let me find it for you now, and I'll just I'll just share it if I can find it. Um, but you can, yep, I'll find it and I'll share it in just a moment. Okay, uh, that's a nice program. Uh, anything else under other? All right, we have a meeting. The next meeting is October 27th. Uh, and that the meeting, it will be voting in this room, right? I'm sorry, what? Uh, for our next meeting, won't there be voting going on in this room? Will there? That's yes. That's a thought. Oh, really? Oh, is it only during the hours that are open, yeah. right? I think so, yeah. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Oh. It's not, yeah, it's at nighttime. But I have to tell you, we uh, finished everything on this agenda tonight, and I'm not aware of any new filings yet. I think we're getting something is coming in tomorrow, but I only, only it's just a, it's a tear down. Uh, okay, a so it'll be a house. very light agenda. It'll be, yeah, should be. Maybe. Depends on who shows up. Maybe. B, uh, what is the status of uh, uh, continuing with this hybrid arrangement, given the technical difficulties and the interruptions and all that stuff? Right. So it's it's up to you. I mean, the board could go back to just just in person meetings. The board can go to just remote meetings, or you can continue to do hybrid. I think until March. I think the the, the emergency order was extended, um, and then it'll probably be extended again. I wouldn't be surprised, but um, but. I, I don't think there are any other. There may be other boards in town that are meeting just in person and not remote, not the hybrid. It's up to you. I mean, you know, if it, if it gets to be too unruly and too too difficult to deal with, you could just have go back to just having in person meetings. But you have an in person meeting only. Does that mean the public can only appear in person, or that they still right. they can't call in? It would be just like before. Yeah. I mean, it's something to consider if it if it turns out that that this format is just getting too unwieldy. We need to make a decision tonight, folks. But one of the other aspects of that is attendance issues. You know, I mean, it is easier for some people to show up in person. We had trouble even getting a quorum for the last meeting. If you couldn't show up online, that put even more difficulty in us having attendance and establishing a quorum. You know, that's a uh, it's a it's an issue that needs to be improved. I think we need to have people show up at meetings. Right. Absolutely do. Because it was just you know I missed one meeting and it's canceled. Kind of irritating. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I was looking up too that there is a bill that just got approved for unruliness at a public meeting of any kind. You could do these following things, but it doesn't relate to anything like this. Right. Well. We did, Larry and Bill and I did some training last week, and um, I think I gave you guys a quick summary of some of it. Um, we are allowed to ask for people's names and addresses, but it's really kind of a, a, a commission policy. You can't, if they, if they choose not to, that's fine, but it's, it's not, that's, we can ask. Yeah, this guy. Hmm? <laughs> he shows up on almost all meetings in town now. Is he really? Yeah. 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 He'll probably get tired of it. Oh, one of Love is it. there is First. there anything can be done if somebody's unruly? Uh, like I'm I'm on school committee and you can actually if you're in a thing and it gets unruly that person chair side to that to eject them. Yep, you can do that. Yep. Uh, Indra, do you have comment on this discussion at all? Yeah, that's what I was asking. Yep. That is there anything can be done if somebody's unruly? Uh, we go back to in-person meetings. It's a little easier to manage, I think. So well, what do you do if somebody becomes check. unruly in the in-person meeting? And you call the police. You can, you can still eject them, Indra. You can ask them to leave. And if they don't, you can call the police on them. Police. Okay. But in this case, you, nothing can be done. Yeah, it's a, it's a difficult question. And it's, it's a big town-wide debate. The town is trying to figure out what to do about it and what, what is legally allowable to do about it. Uh, this guy might be calling in from Florida, they think, and yet he's decided to harass in a lot of meetings. So, uh, Right, it wouldn't be an issue, though, if he just waited for his turn. Exactly, he could say what he wanted and stick to the three exactly. minutes. And there were guidelines, like if you're gonna limit him to three minutes, you're gonna limit everybody to three minutes, right. be consistent and be fair. Yeah. You hope that they do the same in return. 
So are we uh, in a position to make a decision now or should we table it uh, and see how things go or what? I would table it. I, the next meeting is going to be fairly short and we should just see how that goes, you know. So it'll be time to discuss. All right, Don, do you have a comment on it? I would table it as well and see what, what happens. Okay, he's saying table as well, see what happens. I just want to mention, this is Indra. Table it. Table as well. I am with you guys, you know, whatever you decide, I'm with you guys. I don't know. All right, thank you, thank you, Indra. So I guess the consensus seems to be, we'll continue with the hybrid format for one more meeting. Uh, if we end up with either technical or uh, problems with uh, improper participation out of order, uh, then we will decide what to do. Of course, we had a technical problem tonight. If there was no WebEx, um, nobody, nobody at home would have been able to hear us at all because the BCAT mics were out. So, can I ask? The WebEx uh, saved us tonight. Can I ask one question? Yes. Uh, when we were discussing about that five uh, B twenty five Blanchard Road, that's where the problem started, and then could not hear anything. What happened to that five B? Um, I think. It looks like we may have accidentally, somebody might have accidentally turned off the mics here. Right. I mean, we didn't do it on purpose, but somebody must have hit it or something. I mm -hmm. think that was the issue, right? Right. Okay, I, thought that, it was, I thought it was me and WebEx, but I don't think it was. So is that that gonna, has is someone going to look into this for them soon? Well, oh, oh, you mean the, the, the likes? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> between us. I'm now, sure. Between now and our next meeting, so. So will you be writing a note to someone about it, the problem? Yeah. We can, yep. yeah. No, I mean, what what happened to that uh, to, uh, 5B? Was it approved? It was approved, or? yes. That was the Mary Cummings Park. Yeah. Oh. It got a negative. Sorry, Indra. It got a negative determination. Yep. With conditions. Because we could not vote. That's oh. why I was asking. Right. Okay. I hope that vote was slide. So then, oh, yeah, and mind. one of the reasons for things out of order was one of the one of the things we could have done at that point, since we had a quorum of people here, was yeah. we could have shut off the remote completely and held a meeting because BCAT was still on, so it was still public. Uh, but uh, we were able to get us, get them back on, and, and we took that other one out of order because I had to back out because I was in a butter. So we wanted to make sure you guys were still on for that one in case we had to cut you out later. Well, it was probably just as well because I'm BCAT was only able to hear us through WebEx. Yeah. So it, we would have actually lost the, the audience. Charlie, can I just show you just before we go? Just, here's our adopt a drain program. Okay. And you click, sorry, just you can just Google, you know, uh, conservation and Burlington conservation and adopt drain. I'm sure it'll it'll bring you to here. And then you you go on to uh Onto, onto the map, and you can just zoom into your house and uh, pick your drain to name Herman or whatever you choose. My wife will want to know if she can decorate it. So it doesn't block it? <laughs> I think so. Do you like put a pumpkin over it? Yeah, um, I just want to the Halloween. She had a balloon coming out of it with my we can, hand. We, we don't really have any. We give any, it's only a few because. All right. That's so uh, the next meeting of the commission is October 27th, 2022. Uh, the next meeting is one meeting in November, uh, November 10th, uh, 2022. Uh, okay. Uh, is there anything else before we adjourn? Okay. All right, could I have a motion to adjourn this meeting of the Burlington Conservation Commission, please? I move, Ken. Second? Second, Bill. All right, Ed, how do you vote on yes. adjourn? John. Yes. Indra. Yes. Kent. Yes. Bill. Yes. And the chair votes yes by a vote of six zero zero. This meeting of the Burlington Conservation Commission is adjourned. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening.